This video and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only and is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional services and consultation from a licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decisions, and those decisions are theirs. Welcome back to Find Your Alpha. We've got another great video for you this week, and you can see the title on your screen. My preschool age daughter told me mommy was napping with the window man. Now, let's get into this story. But before we do, I wanted to cover some of the key points in the story. The first one, cheaters are born. They do not evolve. A lot of people come up with excuses and say, oh, the reason I cheated is because all these variables came together and the opportunity was there and this and that. No, if you put a non-cheater in that same environment, they would not cheat. So you're either a cheater or you're not. Number two, given the right opportunity, a cheater will cheat. That's what I just said. If all those factors come together and that environment is there, if a cheater is in that environment, they very likely will cheat. Meanwhile, a non-cheater is not going to do anything. Number three, when a spouse cheats, not only are they cheating on their partner, they're also cheating on the kids. Number four, after cheating is discovered, don't prolong the agony, end the relationship, and move on. Do you want to live in purgatory your whole life? Life is short. You don't want to do that. And then finally, Harboring anger and hate for another person enables that person to control your mind. So even though you're mad and you're angry, ooh, I'm so mad at that person, you've got to let that anger go and get to a point of indifference where you don't even care about that person. So those are the points to watch out for in this story. Now let's get into it. And this story dates back to June of 2021. This guy says, looking for some advice here from any fathers that have been cheated on. I recently became the victim of my wife's infidelity, and it has totally destroyed my family. I'm a 31-year-old male, and my wife is a 27-year-old female. For this, I will refer to my wife as Deidre and to myself as Dave. We have two kids, a daughter age four and a son age two. I'll call them Sammy, so the daughter is Sammy, and the son is Timmy. So they've got a preschooler, who is the daughter, Sammy, she's four, and they've got a toddler, age two, who is Timmy. The cheating occurred within the last few weeks, and before that, I believe my wife was completely faithful. At least that's what I think. No, I do believe she was. We got married nearly six years ago and our anniversary is coming up next Saturday, June 26th. Barring a miracle, this will be our last year together. It pains me to say that, but that's where my head is at this moment. I'm not going to get specific about my line of work, but let's just say I have a good job. My wife and I met in her final semester of college, and I married her 13 months later. Two big thumbs down there. Number one, they married very young. He was 25, it looks like, and she was 21. And he married her 13 months after meeting her. Too young and too quick. She followed me to the East Coast, where I worked for four years and where our kids were born. Earlier this year, I was given a promotional opportunity to run one of our offices located within 15 minutes of both our hometowns. So it sounds like they, they grew up near each other, but not in the same town. Deidre and I were excited to move back home, especially after having kids, and our parents were overjoyed. Both my parents and her mother still live in the area, as does my younger brother. Deidre's dad passed away before I met her. Our families were, of course, excited to have the two of us back home, but were really excited about being able to see their grandkids on the regular. As things worked out, my mom and dad had recently moved into a new home in a 55-plus community and were planning to keep our family home and rent it out for income. Our family home is a historic structure and is just a beautiful place sitting on over three acres of land 
with a small creek flowing through the wooded lot on the back of the property. Sounds great. Instead of buying a house, Deidre and I decided to move into the family home and pay rent to my mom and dad. My parents want to keep the home in the family and pass it down to me and my brother, and they'd like us to do the same. My parents and brother didn't want the rent money, but I insisted since my dad recently retired and was counting on the rent money for income. So he's got obviously a very nice, very good family there. His you know, dad, mom, and brother didn't even want him paying rent. Paying them rent was like paying myself anyway, since my parents are leaving everything to me and my little brother. Okay, like I said, this house is very special to my family and my parents treated it with great TLC over the years. But there were a few things that needed done after we moved in. Since it is a historic home, it has unique fixtures and features that requires specialization. My parents had been working with a local contracting company for the past 35 years who has done nearly all the major repair work on the house. One of their specialties is working on older homes, and they do a great job. So anyway, after getting a list of projects together, I called them and got an estimate. The owner came out and walked around the house with me. He's a great man and has built a great company. If you look at the reviews for this place online, they've got like an 82% 5 star rating, 16% 4 stars, and that's out of nearly 700 reviews. Most companies like this have review scores that average in the 3 range if they're lucky. So that tells you something about this outfit. A couple weeks after getting the estimate, the company started the repairs. They moved quickly and always had the project area cleaned up at the end of the day. My wife and I were very pleased with their work and professionalism. The work was primarily done by three of their craftsmen. But one guy in particular completed most of the projects on our home. Let's call him Brock for this posting. So now enter the picture Brock and you can see very likely where this is going to go. Brock was a very personable and polite guy that was about my age. My daughter referred to Brock as the window man as she saw him through our second story windows while he was working out on the ladder. All repairs were completed on time and we were now settled in at the house. My wife and kids love the place, and I love my new job. Everything was going well until I had an innocent conversation with my daughter two weeks ago today. My wife had gone shopping with her mom and my mom, and I was watching the kids. We were playing out back, and my daughter was running all over the place. And when she got tired, she jumped up on my lap. We were just talking generally, and then out of the blue, she looked at me and said, I saw mommy napping with the window man. Ugh. Now before we go any further, let me say my daughter is a highly gifted child. I know all parents feel that way about their kids, but with her it's true. She is highly gifted. Everyone who meets her immediately recognizes it. Her doctors recognized it and we had her tested before we moved and she scored one of the highest scores the clinic had ever seen for a four-year-old. Now, I don't know what kind of testing they did. I don't think they can do IQ testing that young, but maybe they do. But at least it was some sort of cognitive testing that was done and apparently this girl is very gifted. So I knew what she was telling me was very likely factual. Although there was a possibility this could have been something she made up as she does have a remarkable imagination. I was shocked and asked her to repeat it and she told me the same thing she just said. I asked her to tell me what happened and how she saw them. She said my wife put Timmy and her down for their afternoon nap. Sammy said Timmy dropped his binky behind his bed and was crying for her to get it, but she couldn't reach it. So she went looking for her mom. I asked her if she called mommy and she said no. She said she walked over to our bedroom door and opened it and then called mommy. I asked her what she saw and she said mommy jumped up out of bed with a blanket wrapped around her and ran over and kissed her and then took her by the hand to get the binky and to tuck them back in. I said where did you see the window man? 
She said he was lying on daddy's side of the bed. Oh, the disrespect. Oh, my goodness. Hearing this hurt so bad, but I didn't want to show emotion. So I said he was. She said yes. I then asked her what happened next. She said mommy left their bedroom and I heard her talking with the window man. And they went outside. I asked her what she did next. Sammy said she got up and looked out the window and saw him driving his truck down the driveway. I gave her a big kiss and thanked her for telling me. She then said something that really broke me. She said mommy told her, shh, let's keep this our secret, okay? Wow, that's disgusting. I asked her what she said back to mommy and she said, I told mommy, okay. Again, my little girl is smart, and somehow she sensed what she saw wasn't right. Again, I didn't want her to be upset, so I made light of the situation and said, Thank you so much for telling me. I'm so proud of you. Now this can be our secret, okay? She said, Okay, I won't tell Mommy I told you. Then she said, Daddy, don't tell Mommy I told you. And I told her, There's no way. This is our secret. I then tickled her to break the mood, and we started laughing and talking about something else. I could tell this secret my wife asked her to keep was really upsetting my daughter, and after telling me, I think she felt relieved. And I put some angry faces here because just reading that just enraged me. You know, not only did this woman cheat on her husband, but she brought this strange man into their home, into their bed, got discovered by their daughter and then has the nerve to tell her daughter to keep this dirty secret. Man, that is the lowest of low. You can't forgive that. My wife came home with our moms in tow and she summoned me to come inside with her while our moms went out on the back porch to watch Sammy and Timmy. When I got outside, my wife showed me a gift she bought for Sammy. It was a gift Sammy picked out for her birthday which is not until October. I asked why she bought it now, and she said she wanted to give it to her now. This was surprising, as Sammy wasn't asking about this gift and was not expecting it until her birthday. Also, my wife and I have a clear understanding with Sammy of when she will get large gifts. She knows it's only on her birthday and Christmas, and she accepts this. And like I said, she has never mentioned the gift again, since she chose it a couple months ago. So this is definitely a red flag because all of a sudden now your wife is buying her a gift. Why is she buying her a gift out of the blue when that's not something you normally do? My wife justified the purchase saying, she's such a great kid and has been so good lately. I wanted to reward her. I hope you're not mad. I told her I wasn't mad, but I immediately sensed this was a bribe of sorts for Sammy to keep my wife secret. When my wife gave Sammy the gift, Sammy was concerned and said, I wasn't supposed to get this until my birthday. What am I going to get then? Deidre told Sammy, you've been such a good girl. Mommy and Daddy want to give you this now. Sammy surprisingly said, no, I want to keep it until my birthday. I don't want it now. My wife kept coaxing her to open it, but Sammy didn't want to and looked at me for backing. I spoke up and told Sammy, Let's take this upstairs and put it in your closet. My wife was stunned by Sammy's reaction, but it didn't surprise me. Like I said, she's very smart, and she didn't want that gift until her birthday. We took the gift upstairs to her closet, and she seemed relieved to not have to open it. When Sammy and I came back downstairs, my dad and brother had arrived, so we spent the rest of the day eating and enjoying family time. I was going through the motions and having fun with my family, but my mind was preoccupied with what Sammy told me. Later that night, I was going to confront my wife, but decided not to, since if what Sammy said was true, my wife would likely deny it. Instead, I told my wife I needed to wake up early Sunday morning to do some work for my company using our home computer. She was fine with this and asked if I wanted her to get up with me to keep me company, and I told her no. When I woke up, I did a complete check on our home computer, and there was nothing. Then I went on her phone, 
entered her password, and again, nothing. I thought to myself, did Sammy make this whole thing up? She could have, but her details were too descriptive not to be true. The rest of the day we spent over at my parents visiting with my aunt and uncle, who had flown in from out of town. I hadn't seen them in over two years, so it was good to visit with them and to introduce them to Timmy, who they had not yet met. We had a great day and everything appeared to be normal with Deidre. She was her ever-loving self and showed no signs of anything. I returned to work on Monday, but the thought of what Sammy told me was still on my mind. So several times during the day, I drove over past my home to alleviate my suspicion. So he must live nearby where his office is. I did the same thing on Tuesday and then again on Wednesday. So this guy's going crazy. He's you know, heading out several times a day, just driving by his house to make sure, hey, I don't see that truck there or see a strange car in the driveway. There was nothing, but I just had a strong feeling Sammy was right. I thought of hiring a private investigator, but instead I decided to buy a camera system at BB, Best Buy, okay, so at Best Buy. I installed the camera system when Deidre and Sammy were out attending an evening event at our local nature center, and I was home watching Timmy. I placed the camera outside near the garage looking down the driveway, a second camera in the living room, and the third camera in our master bedroom. I placed each camera where they could not be seen unless your eyes somehow stumbled upon them. I was concerned, however, that my wife may notice the camera in our bedroom, though it was up on the crown molding and completely blended in as our crown molding is white with black trim. It was in sight if you were laying on your back looking straight at it. So he was thinking, hey, if my wife's cheating and she's on her back and she's looking up, she's going to see that camera. I turned the system on when I left for work every day and turned it off before I arrived home. Since my wife and kids don't spend much time in the living room, our bedroom, or on the driveway during the day, they didn't set the cameras off much. When the cameras are triggered, I receive a text alert. Everything was normal until the following Tuesday at 1.46 p.m. when I got an alert from the driveway unit. When I checked, I saw a truck from the contracting company coming up the drive. I then saw Brock get out. Now remember, Brock is the guy that did all those repairs on the house. He was the lead guy. Walk up to my front door open it, and go in. I next got an alert from the living room camera, and there I saw my wife kissing Brock. Worst fears confirmed, Sammy was right, so his daughter was spot on with what she told him. With this, I rushed out to my car and started heading toward my house. On the way, I called my mom and told her what was happening and asked her to meet me at my house as soon as possible. I mean, this lady, man, she was really taking a risk, this guy's wife, because he works nearby, her mother-in-law and father-in-law live nearby, as does her mother, plus her kids are in the house with her, and yet she's carrying on this affair. My brother, aunt, and uncle were also there, and I told her to bring them. On the way over, I spoke with them on the phone. By this time, I had gotten an alert from the bedroom and knew what was likely happening there. I was really upset but held it together, giving instructions to my family. I told my mom and aunt I wanted them to take the children outside when I confronted Deidre. I then asked my uncle and brother if they could accompany me in my bedroom when I confronted Deidre. I explained I wanted them as witnesses and to prevent me from doing something violent. They readily agreed. We parked on the driveway down from the house, blocking Brock's truck in, and walked up to the front door. The door was unlocked, and we all entered the house. Now, we are at a point in this story where I want to encourage you, if you're liking what you hear, hit that like button. That'll help get this video seen by people all over the world. Now, let's get on with our story. Our bedroom is on the back of the house, so there was no chance the cheaters saw or heard us approaching. 
I led the way with my brother and uncle right behind me and my mom and aunt behind him. Man, what a scene that had to be with this whole group of people marching towards that bedroom. The noise from the bedroom drowned out any noise we were making walking up the stairs and down the hall to the bedroom. Oh my gosh. My heart was beating out of my chest at this point. I mean, I can't imagine the tension that you would feel in a situation like that. It has to be off the charts. I motioned for my mom and aunt to go past us to the kids' room. I then looked at my uncle and brother and asked if they were ready and they nodded yes. And with that, I opened the door and walked in. My wife screamed, oh no, oh my God. And with that, Brock dismounted and fell back on the floor, started apologizing and reaching for his clothes. I had my phone out and was filming and said nothing. I just stood there in silence, moving my phone camera back and forth. Brock continued apologizing and getting dressed while my wife had the sheets pulled up to her face and was crying, saying, This wasn't supposed to happen. I didn't mean to hurt you, Dave. I love you so much. I'm so sorry. All that BS that they say, you know, when they're caught like that. After a couple minutes, Brock was fully dressed and sat on the floor with his hands covering his face and was continuing to apologize while my wife kept crying and apologizing. So, of course, you got this apology central here. Don't believe anything either one of these cheaters say. I told Brock to get the F out, and he quickly left. Before leaving, I told him, Don't think about taking your truck. We have it blocked in, and I will be calling the company to come and pick it up. I then called my mother-in-law and explained to her what just happened and told her to come over and pick up her daughter. My wife was still laying in the bed under the covers, pleading with me not to make her go. I ignored her. My mother-in-law arrived shortly thereafter, and when she did, my uncle, brother, and I left the bedroom. So they were standing there in that bedroom. Just imagine this scene, guys. So you had this guy, his uncle and his brother, standing there staring at this woman, and she's in bed just crying and apologizing with the sheets pulled up. That's what I imagine that scene looked like. I then heard my mother-in-law yelling at my wife as she sobbed. To my surprise, my wife left the house without incident. When she left, she rushed out with her head down, crying, and didn't say anything. I think she was in a total state of shock and was also highly embarrassed. My mother-in-law apologized to me, gave me a big hug and kiss, and told me she loved me. After they left, I went out back to see my kids and then called the contracting company. After I explained the reason for my call, they put me through to the owner's cell phone. He apologized profusely and said he would see to it that his company did everything they could to make this up to me. I thanked him and ended the call. About an hour later, the company dropped by with someone to pick up the truck. Brock was nowhere in sight. Well, of course he's not going to be anywhere in sight because the guy knew, hey, I'm busted. I'm going to get fired. Why do I want to hang around here? I'm just going to walk home or probably walk to some bar and just get drunk. The following Monday, I took the day off and met with a lawyer to start divorce proceedings. I also secured an attorney from the same firm to handle the situation with the contracting company. While I respect the owner and the company he's built, I want to receive some level of compensation for the damage their employee inflicted on me and my family. Hey, I don't blame the guy because that guy... That technician or craftsman, whatever he was, he's a representative of that company. Since D-Day, I've not spoken a word to my wife. She's called and texted me nonstop, apologizing, begging forgiveness, and asking me for a second chance, but that's not happening. Thumbs up to you, guy. You need to stay strong. After what she did and your daughter saw her with this guy, and then she has the nerve to tell your daughter to keep a dirty secret like that, this woman is trash. Get rid of her. Against the advice of my attorney, I've moved all my wife's stuff out and had my brother and a friend of his take it to her mother's house. The way I've got things working now is that my wife and her mom come to my house at 6.30 a.m. Her mom comes in and my wife waits in the car until I leave for the office Then she goes in. I work until 5 o'clock. 
and then head out to grab dinner at a restaurant and then come home at 6.30 p.m. My wife and her mother have dinner with the kids before I arrive back home. When I'm about five minutes out from the house, I call my mother-in-law to advise her. My wife then goes out to the car while her mom stays in the house with the kids. When I arrive, I ignore my wife sitting in the car and go straight in the house. I usually talk to my mother-in-law for a few minutes to recap the day before she leaves. I then spend the next 12 hours with my kids and repeat this cycle seven days a week. So he is totally cutting his wife out while still maintaining that home life, that stable home life for the kids. You can see he's not interacting with his wife whatsoever. He's saying that his wife, when she comes in the morning, she waits in the car until he leaves, and then she goes in, and then at night, she comes out to the car before he comes home, waits in the car, you know, and uh, he doesn't interact with her at all, which I think is the right thing to do. Totally cut them off. Do not have any conversations with them unless you do it through your attorney. I know this may seem extreme to some, but I want nothing to do with my wife. No, I give it a thumbs up, dude. I think you're doing the right thing. I wouldn't want anything to do with her as well. If I could, I would ban her from ever seeing my kids again. But I know that's not happening. I have extreme anger for what she did to me. The fact she had a strange man in my bed while my kids were in the next room, then instructed my daughter to lie for her, that is beyond forgiveness to me. Absolutely it is. That's what I just said, man. You can't forgive her for this. I've instructed my lawyer to go for full custody. She says we will not get it, but we do have a shot of getting 50-50 custody with my home being designated as the child's primary home. That's where things stand as of today. Now my question. Have any of you been able to successfully raise your kids post-divorce without ever speaking another word to your ex-wife? So this guy doesn't want anything to do with her. And I don't blame him, man. This woman is trash. She's evil for what she did. My attorney is going to stipulate as part of the divorce settlement that all communications are to be through a court-approved email application and that my wife is not to speak a word to me unless it is an emergency involving our kids. As you can imagine, I hate my wife and have absolutely no care what happens to her post-divorce. I know she's the mother of my children, but I still don't care. My family tells me to release my hate and anger for my soon-to-be ex-wife, as it is unhealthy for both me and my kids, but I can't do that. I know they are looking out for my best interest, but until you've walked in my shoes, you can't begin to know what I'm feeling. I look forward to your replies and plan to respond to as many people as I can, although my responses may be delayed. Thanks for reading this post and for being my sounding board, Dave. All right, and next we're going to take a look at a few responses he got back from the community. The first one is from a woman. She said, I would caution you on giving up a six-year relationship and a beautiful family based on a bad decision your wife made. Yes, what she did is despicable. But in time, the pain and mistrust you feel will fade. No, it will not fade. It will always be there. The mistrust will never go away, nor will the pain. Every time that that crosses your mind about her cheating, it's going to bring back all the pain and all the mistrust. This woman says, don't listen to the people on here saying once a cheater, always a cheater. That's not the case for everyone. I should know. I once was in your wife's shoes 23 years ago. So this woman, obviously, she was a cheater herself. So that's why she's saying, have mercy on this woman. Now, here's a response from a guy. He says, I think we're using the same app you're talking about, and it works great. All communications with my ex go through the app, and if she asks a question that doesn't involve our kids, I just ignore her. Also, I have an intermediary, my sister who picks up and drops off my kids between custody sessions. Wife's still trying to get me back after four years, but that ain't happening. So this guy's doing the same thing this guy wants to do. He's totally ignoring his wife. He's only interacting with her via email. And I really think that's the best. You know, you can still successfully co-parent that way. Next response is from a woman. She says, you need to seek counseling to help you manage your hate and anger. 
I would also recommend you get your daughter into counseling as well to make sure there are no lingering emotional scars for her. Until you release that hate and anger for your soon-to-be ex-wife, she will forever be in control of your thoughts and thus be controlling you. Let it go and let her go. Now, I do have to agree with what this woman is saying here, and I said that right up front. If you allow someone to get you angry and just so you know hateful and you bear all that inside, she is controlling your mind. You don't want to give her that power. Like I said, you got to get to a point where you don't even care about her. And if you don't do that, she's going to continue to control your mind. And finally, we got one from a guy. He says, I know I'm going to catch some hate on here, but I'm one of those guys who has given their wife a second chance. Oh, Mr. Simp, Mr. Simp. My situation happened 13 years ago, but my wife did it outside the house and did not involve the kids. Since that time, she's recommitted herself to me and basically acts as my servant both in the kitchen and in the bedroom. All has been heavenly since. Good luck, my friend. Oh, this guy. I mean, you know, he's saying, oh, this woman is just his servant now. and She's doing all these things for him, probably giving him whatever he wants in the bedroom. But is it worth it, guys, to live with someone like that who has disrespected you in the highest way? I don't care what she's doing. I would never trust her again, and I wouldn't want to touch her again. Okay, and now for the updates. He's got one interim update, and then he's got a final update, so we'll find out how this all turned out. This update is from August 3rd of 2021, about seven weeks later. He says, hello, everyone. I've had a lot of requests for an update, so I wanted to come back to let you know where things stand now. I first want to thank everyone for your responses. Most of the messages I received were constructive and helpful to me as I navigated the choppy waters of divorce. I'm in a much better place mentally than I was back in June, thanks to my kids and my wonderful family, specifically my mom, dad, and brother. My kids are also doing great. Timmy is too young to realize a change, and Sammy really hasn't noticed that her mom and I are not together in the same place, since she sees her mom every day at our house from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. I've been eating dinner over at my parents' home, and then the three of us go over to my house to relieve my mother-in-law and wife of their duties. The kids love it since they have company all day. Now, for my soon-to-be ex, she's struggling. She's still in the mindset that she's going to win me back somehow and keeps coming up with new things to offer me, thinking that will sway me. Isn't it funny? These women go off and cheat, disrespect their husbands in the biggest way. Then when their husband stands up and says, I'm divorcing you. I don't want anything more to do with you. Now all of a sudden, oh my gosh, he's the center of my universe. I've got to do everything to get this man back and offer him the world. Let's see what she's going to offer him here. The latest thing she's come up with is that I could have a one-sided open relationship. Oh, not another one of these with as many partners as I wanted, but she would still remain faithful and would sign a post-nup agreement with those stipulations. He says, really? I'm not like that. I'm not like her. I'm a one-woman type of man, and that's what I'll be looking for with my next relationship, which will not be any time in the near future. Thumbs up there, guy. You need to take some time to yourself before you jump into another relationship with a woman. She's seeing a therapist three times a week and has her mom convinced that she went temporarily insane for a couple weeks and that's why she cheated. This is a crock of BS, of course. She knew exactly what she was doing. I've since read that the claim of temporary insanity is a ploy women sometimes use to try to excuse their cheating. I'm not buying it, of course, and still have not spoken a word to her Good for you, because that is total BS. My mother-in-law is taking things pretty hard. She's a sweet woman who loves me, her grandkids, and my parents. She's asked me several times if there was any way I could forgive and reconcile with her daughter. No, no. She said she's truly sorry and loves me more than anything in the world. I love my mother-in-law and didn't want to get into a discussion with her, so I've just told her, that I cannot. As for the idea of my wife being sorry, I do believe she is sorry. 
Sorry for herself, that is, and sorry she got caught. I think in her twisted mind, she thought betting Brock was okay, as long as she did not let our relationship suffer. She had the nerve to send me an email explaining how, even during the affair, she always gave me 100% of herself, including 100% of her body. He says, are you kidding me? Ah." You know, that even makes it worse that she's doing you and this other guy basically at the same time. That is just disgusting. All right, enough about my soon-to-be ex. I'm getting angry just talking about her. Divorce should be complete within a few months. When it is, I'll come back on here and update everyone. Take care, Dave. And now for his final update. And his final update occurred on May 13th of 2022, over nine months later. By popular demand, I've come back to give everyone an update on my situation. Well, I'm very pleased to report that I am finally divorced from Deidre. Good job, guy. You hung in there and you saw it through to completion. The process, however, was much more difficult than anticipated and was filled with drama, which delayed the final proceedings until March. As time went on last year, I remained focused on getting divorced as quickly as possible. Deidre grew more and more desperate. She tried daily to talk to me, but I would only communicate via email and only about our children. When she broached the subject of our relation, I simply replied each time that our marriage is over and that from now on we will only have a co-parenting relationship. In September, my mother-in-law told me that she started talking about ending it all and saying if she didn't have me, she didn't want to live. So here you go. My mother-in-law asked if I could speak to her and I resisted, but eventually met with her in the presence of my mother-in-law and my mother. In the meeting, Deidre elaborated on how sorry she was and told me everything she was willing to do for me if I just give her a chance. She kept asking me to just give her six months so she can prove herself. I let her go on until she was talked out. And when she was finished, I told her that I no longer see her as a romantic partner and was not interested in any form of reconciliation, even if it was just for one day. So my man is holding strong. After this meeting, her mom told me she became deeply depressed and stopped going out of the house. In fact, my mother-in-law would come over at 6.30 a.m. when I left for work. She would dress the kids and fix them their breakfast, then take them back to her house to be with Deidre. She said Deidre was withdrawn from them and spent most of the day in her room crying and pining for me. My daughter noticed and asked me why Mommy was crying all the time. This was very upsetting to her and to my son Timmy, although he is young enough where he doesn't notice as much. I explained to Sammy that Mommy and me are living in separate houses now. I told her that she, Timmy, and I are living in our house, and Mommy is living with Grammy. After I explained this, she was okay. Her primary fear was that she would be moving to Grammy's house, too. She loves her Grammy and her mom, of course, but I think she loves me more. She was worried about moving out of our house and leaving me in her room and the creek where she likes to play. I told her that would never happen. After hearing this, she was fine. The drama with Deidre didn't stop there, though. As the date for our final divorce hearing grew closer, Deidre became more desperate and was calling and texting me multiple times per day while I was working, reiterating all the things she will do for me and how I would be the happiest man in the world if I'd stay with her and she'd promise me that. I'm paraphrasing now, but you get the picture. Well, the day before the hearing, I get a call from my mother-in-law informing me that Deidre was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. They thought she was having a heart attack. She was admitted and tests were run. In the end, it was determined that she was suffering from severe dehydration. Her mom told me she hadn't eaten anything for the past three days, but said she was drinking water. Apparently, she wasn't and got severely dehydrated. I think she did this purposely to delay the final divorce hearing. Of course she did. Well, her shenanigans worked as the hearing was delayed until after the first of the year. Then was delayed again due to weather. 
Finally, in early March, the hearing took place and I was granted a divorce. Thank God. Overall, I think I made out pretty well, all things considered. We are in a at-fault state, and I have video proof of Deidre's cheating. The videos were not necessary, though, as Deidre and her attorney gave a full written confession to the judge. In terms of the division of assets, I ended up keeping nearly 63%, as the judge allowed me to retain everything I brought into the marriage. Oh, good for him. Even so, Deidre ended up getting 71000 from me, as well as child support, but no alimony. Like I said, I made out pretty well, but the idea of paying child support to her just burns me. We split custody 50-50 with my home being the primary home. I'm paying my 50% and also paying her 50? How is this fair? Shouldn't she have to contribute? The court system seems to be totally rigged against fathers. He's got a point, a good point there. If they got 50-50 custody and the kids are primarily living in his house and he's paying his 50%, you know, he's paying all their upkeep and taking care of them for his 50%, why doesn't the wife have to come up with the 50%? She got $71,000. She's an able-bodied person. She can go out and work. But yet he has to pay her child support. I mean, the system definitely is not fair. It is rigged against guys. It's got to change. Or marriage is just going to totally disappear. So that's where we are today. We still have the same 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. arrangement seven days a week. And it's working well, especially for my kids, as they get to see both parents every day. So he's still doing that. I'm even back on speaking terms with my ex, but only about our children. If she asks me how I'm doing, I just redirect her and say, let's keep it to the kids. Smart. An issue has popped up in the past couple days, which I'm going to nip in the bud quickly. As I said in one of my previous posts, my wife and mother-in-law come over in the morning and stay until I arrive at 6.30 p.m. Well, for the last three days, my mother-in-law hasn't been there at 6.30 p.m., only my wife. When I get home, she lingers around and tries to talk to me, engaging the kids. Yesterday, little Timmy got upset when his mom left, as he wanted her to stay. My wife, of course, leveraged this, looking for sympathy from me, but I remained strong and held Timmy and said he'd see Mommy tomorrow morning, and he was fine. I'll have a talk with Deidre tomorrow about this and let her know that our handoff conversations need to be brief and to the point, period. Now, to answer a question I've gotten from many respondents here. Have I told anyone else about the conversation I had with Sammy, where she told me mommy was napping with the window man? The answer is no, and I don't plan to. At least not any time in the foreseeable future. I promised Sammy that was our secret and that it will remain. As for Sammy, I may end up telling her in 20 or 30 years, but for now, I hope she has completely forgotten whatever she saw. Sammy has never mentioned it to me again and seems as active and happy as ever, so I don't plan on discussing it with her again. That's the end of my story. Not a happy ending, but just about as good as you can get considering the circumstances, Dave. So that's his story. I know it was a long one, but I think it was a very good one. He handled the situation like a boss. As soon as he found out she was cheating, he immediately cut things off with her. He moved her out, which, you know, legally he just can't do that. But he did. He said, hey, you treated me poorly. You treated my kids terribly. And he moved immediately to get a divorce. And he held strong. Even though his wife did all these shenanigans, he still held his ground and held firm and saw the divorce through to the end. So this guy handled it very well. So those are my thoughts on this story. And now I want to hear from you. What did you think of this story? How do you think this guy handled the situation? Would you have handled it differently? And also, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to this channel. And I will talk to you on the next one.